time. It is time to brew your best beer. The 2019 SJ Pour Challenge Gold Sponsors. A special thanks to Double Gold Sponsor, Bouncer, keeping the dregs out with an inline filter for home brewers. Brewtubers Online Brewers Club, forums, recipes, and news updates, and more. Yakima Valley Hops, fresh from the source to your kettle. Omega Yeast Labs, fresh, healthy, unique yeast. Jaded Brewing, home of the fastest immersion wort chiller, the Hydra. Kempfo's 2001 CTSP Pink, the world's favorite chlorinated homebrew cleaner with a unique pink color indicator. And our silver sponsor, the Brew Bag, simply the easiest way to brew great beers at home. Hey, what's going on, BrewTubers? Um, so I'm, I'm going to post the, uh, so first of all, I apologize for delay, um, but I'm actually kind of glad that I did this, uh, and I'll talk about that in a minute, um, delaying the, um, you know, video reviews of the SJ Poor Final Round Beers. But before I do that, I'm going to write what I see as wrong with this year's challenge. This is Rhett Brewery's Mango Kolsch. Now, if you go back and look at my round one uh, video reviews, and probably my score sheets, I'd imagine, you'll see that this was one of the best beers I think I had in the competition. Really good. And for whatever reason, I'm not sure why, um, this beer did not make it on to the second round. And I think it was a travesty because this is a damn good beer. Uh, I got this one sent to me from, uh, from Matthew. I think he bottled this one off the Blickman beer gun uh, to see what it would do with the carbonation. If I remember, correct me if I'm wrong, Matt, but and the mango, it's died down now a little bit because this was, this was, you know, it's got some age on it now, but, but this beer, still, man, it's just one of the cleanest, refreshing, crisp, oh, one of the, man, just, I really love this beer, and I wanted to say, I think Matt at least should have made it into the second round, if not into the, into the final round. Um... And uh, I, don't, I don't know what did it. I mean, I, I, it's weird that I gave him my highest score in round one, and yet he didn't make the, even in the fourth place, I guess. Um, really surprising to me. So anyway, Matt, awesome beer. And, you know, he went on and, and was a hub too and uh, did an awesome job for the, for the competition. And, and so we owe him a, a lot of gratitude. He's an awesome brewer. If you haven't had his beers yet, you need to talk to him. He, he does mostly lighter beers, real crisp beers. He always throws some fruit in them, it seems like. Um, I think he did uh, some kind of stout, like a white stout or something recently, and I haven't tried that, but um, yeah, awesome dude. So, um, brings me on to my, I guess, next point, is that the, this year's competition was awesome. It was like a free-for-all. The only constraint they really had was that you had these all-stars that uh, were final round or better uh, participants from previous Humber Wednesdays, and they had a first round uh, buy. And they got to come in and it was interesting because the majority of them didn't fare as well as as a lot of folks expected in the in the uh, in the second round um my beer and i don't have a bottle of my beer so i had the double ipa obviously um and it uh did really well it took first place in the southern hub i guess we were in round one and then first place in the round two uh, and then, uh, I just crapped the bed on round three. Uh, and I apologize to other folks that were in the, and potentially someone I may have edged out, um, you know, out of round two, because that round three beer, um, I, I rebrewed every, every, uh, so I put a significant amount of time and money into this competition this year. Um, and I'll get to that too. Um, and, and I did it because I wanted to keep the, the hop quality throughout the, the competition. Um, I've brewed old school. It's, it was my old school recipe. And I'm kind of glad I didn't make the top three because I don't have to share my recipe now unless somebody really wants it. But um, 
it's treated me well in the past. I, won, I won a gold medal in the DC BJCP uh, home brewer competition here, which had a lot of entries. Um, I forget how many was in the double IP, uh, IPA category, but it was a lot, and I took first place in that one. Um, but um, it was exactly what I wanted in round one. It was exactly what I wanted in round two. Josh Secor, I think, described it the best in, I think it was round one or round two, um, that it had, I had cut off some of the bitterness because I moved some of the hops to the Whirlpool uh, to get a little more aroma uh, and sacrifice some bittering. But, uh, yeah, um, round three, I don't know what happened. The only thing I can think of, it wasn't sanitation. I don't think I was infected with wild yeast. You know, it wasn't, it wasn't anything like that. But as soon as I tapped it off the keg, the very first glass I had was normal. Okay, yeah, this, you know, it's, it's, it's green, so it's not, when you first drink it, it's kind of green. It has to kind of come into its own. Um, but then after a couple of days, it normally tastes about like it's supposed to. It just never did. It, and the way I could describe it, it was like, there was this movie, a Stephen King movie, where they went flying up in the air, and then something happened on the earth, and everything turned like in black and white, and things didn't smell right, and it was almost flavor, flavorless and odorless. That seems to be what happened with my third round beer, and I, I don't know, I don't know why. The only thing I can, it wasn't sanitation because I double sanitized everything. I used the iodine sanitized first, and then I used the regular, uh, that the iodized star sand, then I used the regular, the iodine star sand, and then the regular star sand. So I double sanitized everything. It wasn't, it wasn't anything like that. Um, and it wasn't the brew process. I'm very meticulous of how I brew that beer. The only thing I can think of is the ingredients. Something happened with the ingredients. I don't know if it was the malt, or I don't know if it was the hops. I suspect it was the hops. Because what I'm thinking happened is, I'm thinking I, some of the hops that I got from NHC, you know, and I use certain hops for old school, might have snuck their way into this recipe and perhaps they were old or who knows how long they've been sitting around. I don't know. But whatever happened, just the hop character was gone. The hop character was gone. Even the malt, because I normally have a pretty nice, sweet malt backbone on that thing, that was gone. And, uh, you know, some of the guys that described it in round three talked about, oh, it's, you know, got a big malt character. It was nothing like it was supposed to be. So um, I was actually going to dump it. And that's actually, once I sent in the bottles, I dumped it. I didn't even keep it around because I didn't even want to drink it. I, I didn't like it. I thought it was garbage. Um, and I had talked to Nate about it and said, hey, I think I screwed up this last round. And, you know, he said, yeah, give it some time. And, and uh, you know, SJ, I talked to him and said, hey, I'll go ahead and ship the bottles. But you might want to get whoever the standby is on the ready because um, I just, something was wrong with mine. So he got it, tasted it, and said, no, I think it tastes great, and it's going to go in. And I just, I, you know, relented. And I'm kind of glad I did because I got to sample all the beers in the final round, and they were, there were some good beers. But, uh, but yeah, it was just, uh, but you know what? I'm happy. I, I did really well in the first and second rounds. I got to the final round. Uh, it just always seems to be something like that. And that brings me to my third and final point, I guess. Um, we got... SJ Poor Challenge 2020 is coming up. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to do it. I got a lot of things going on. This is going to be in the spring, so it's coming a lot sooner, I guess, uh, from the finish of this one. This one went on for a while. We started like in July or hell, I don't know when we started, but it seemed like it was going on for months and months and months. Um, and this one's going to start in April, so it's only going to be a couple of months. I got some life changes coming potentially in the new year. Uh, I might be doing a lot more travel, so um, I, yeah, I just don't know. Um, and then the second thing is, the uh there's gonna be constraints on this one unlike there was on this one you could whatever recipe you want which i prefer uh we're, we're kind of back now to you do a certain hop or whatever and i don't know it, that's always tough to kind of get me inter interested in those so we'll see i don't know we'll, we'll see what happens um so uh I, I i just i just don't know if i'm gonna if i'm gonna if i'm gonna uh, get into the next one but be it as it may back to this colch this thing was amazing it was really 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 good and uh i don't think it got the credit it deserved um another beer that was really really good that made it through round one with me in my hub and then went on to round two um and it was a kind of a, a victim of successive brews i think was uh brian mccrickard's mango milkshake ipa that thing was really really good you can go back and look i i really dug it the only thing i think i knocked it for in the first round was it, you know, it seemed like it should have had a little bit more kind of lactose quality or sweetness. But the beer that came in in round two was nowhere near the beer that we had in round one. There was a lot of hot burn. Something happened. I don't know if he rebrewed it or whatever. It'll be interesting to hear from, uh, from Brian. But I was so sad when I 
reviewed that second beer because I was like, oh man, I don't know what happened to this thing. It's a completely different beer. So that's one of the, I guess, downsides to the SJ Pour. If you have to rebrew or you go through successive rounds, um, there's a, a chance that, I mean, it's home brewing. It's, we're not a big commercial, you know, brewery and shit's going to happen. Um, you know, whether it's, you know, lack of consistency in the ingredients we use or, you know, something goes awry, you know, whatever. So it was unfortunately Brian's, you know, wasn't the same beer. And I think if it was, um, there could have been some change in results on the final round. So anyway, that said, uh, all right, 10 minute intro. Wow, this is gonna be an hour long video. So I'm putting in all my beer reviews in one video. Um, I've decided not to edit anything, so you have to kind of just watch them. So if you wanna see all the reviews, you gotta watch the whole thing. Um, anyway, uh, congratulations again to Josh, man. Your, your gold nail was really good. You'll see, I think, I think that was the last one I reviewed in this video. So I'll give you a, I'll give you a, a clue. But uh, that, thing was, that thing was really good. I don't know if I'm gonna brew it because I don't know if I want a Belgian strong sitting around. I like a Belgian beer like once in a while. I don't, it's not something I'll sit and throw my, my tap and kind of sip on, it's not my normal thing. But that was a good, that was a really good beer. Uh, anyway, uh, and Wally, your beer, I have to say, um, actually improved, I think, from, I don't know if you rebrewed it. I don't think it did. So some, I know in the second round, it, you know, I tasted it and it, it had a harsh bitterness on it. The second round, I think I even comment on it. It's you improved on it. So uh, I'd be interested to know what happened with that one too. I suspect Josh's was the same beer because it's a Belgian strong. Why would you rebrew it? Um, and it kind of gives him an advantage too. So anyway, hey, um, have your, I'm not gonna say have yourself a happy homebrew because it's not a homebrew Wednesday, but hope you enjoy the videos in, in all its glory. No edits, no cuts. You get it as I experience it. So nice beer, Matt, maybe next year. Cheers. I hope you had a Merry Christmas and an even better Happy New Year coming up. Okay, here we go. Round three of the SJ Poor Challenge. This is the first entry that I'm going to judge. And oh, by the way, it's Thanksgiving. Um, and I'm very thankful to be doing this right now. Um, I'm waiting for the turkey to cook. So I figured before I assaulted my palate with all kinds of crazy flavors, I would go ahead and knock this thing out. This is uh, ID number... Echo 56, Romeo Delta 3, 4, 2 whiskey. It is a fruited sour and it is 5.5%. There is the label. All right, let's crack it. Fruited sour. I think this is, I want to say this is the first sour uh, I will have had in the competition. Maybe. I think. Perhaps. I think I have the right glass. And I don't see anything, but I'll leave just a little bit in there just in case. Um, okay, so it is, I guess, a straw, straw color, kind of light, uh, light color. Don't know what kind of fruit it has in it. Uh, it has about a one finger, uh, white head um, with you know, different size bubbles in there, mostly tight pack. Uh, looks kind of creamy actually. And uh, it's a, it's a either chill haze or, I don't think that's chill haze. I think that is, it's translucent, let's say that. Um, but yeah, it's got a little, little, bit of, little bit of haze to it. So uh, yeah, it's a nice looking beer. Let's go ahead and get an aroma. Mm. Okay, this one's this one's the one that's going to be hard. So, um, I mean, I, I definitely smell. I can definitely tell that it's a sour, and I can definitely tell that it's a fruited sour. I don't think it says what what fruit it is. Um, fruited sour. Kind of like a nectarine. I know that's probably not what it is, but it could be a nectarine. It could be an apple. I mean, I can smell the fruit, but I can't dis I can't discern which which fruit it is. 
It smells really nice. I don't smell any like off, off aromas or anything. Yeah, it smells very inviting. Yeah, it's more, it smells kind of like a Granny Smith apple now that I smell a little bit more. Yeah, it smells like a Granny, Granny Smith apple. It smells kind of like cranberry too. So I don't know, it's a, this is a hard one to, it's a hard one to tell. I mean, I can definitely smell the fruit, just I'm not, I don't have a strong enough nose to tell which fruit it is, but it's kind of apple-ish, cranberry-ish kind of, um, and I'll, I'll still say the slight kind of nectarine. Uh, a lot of stuff going on in this thing. So anyway, uh, it's a really nice aroma. Uh, hey, uh, all right, let's go in for the, let's go in for a taste. Cheers. So now that I'm putting the taste with the nose, <clears throat> the, um, first of all, I think the mouthfeel on this is like great. It's a good, good level of carbonation. It's crisp. It's, um, light to medium on the mouthfeel in terms of the, the viscosity of the, of the, of the beer. Um, so now on the flavor, it's like very clean, um, very, very well fermented. Um, the flavor follows the nose ex just exactly. The tartness of the souring is, I would imagine they use, uh, some lacto, uh, probably did a, what is it where you, you know, get the wort in the kettle and let it sit overnight. Um, but they, they got the, I think the tartness, just the right level where it complements the, the, the fruit real, uh, really well. Yeah, the, it's got nice lacing. The head is kind of staying on there. It's just a kind of a, a thin coating now across the top. Uh, but you can tell it was kind of a little sticky. This is a 5.5%. Um, one thing that I'm also getting is I'm getting a little bit of a, like a, uh, not grainy, but a biscuit kind of character. I wonder if they use any biscuit malt or uh, Gold Pills Vienna. I use Gold Pills Vienna and I get that kind of biscuit cracker kind of quality. I'm kind of getting that a little bit in this. Wow, this is a really nice beer. I can tell we're in the final round. Really nice beer. Okay, so overall, uh, well, first of all, the craftsmanship on this thing, as I said, is uh, crafted very well. Uh, very clean fermentation. Um, the recipe design was really nice because the tartness doesn't overdrive the fruit. The fruit doesn't overdrive the tartness. And then you even got a little bit of malt complexity in here with the, uh, with the graininess. And uh, <clears throat> it, it works really well. I think from a recipe design standpoint, it was done, done really, really well. Um, you know... If I had to knock anything, maybe the clarity. I don't know if a, a sour beer is supposed to be uh, supposed to be super clear. It's only got a slight haze to it now if, as it's warmed up a little bit, and you know. Um, but yeah, it was a it's a pretty beer. Um, I mean, that's the only thing I could complain about this beer is it could be clear, maybe. I don't know. Yeah. Um, the only thing I'll wonder with this one is. You know, I've looked at the beer styles that we have coming up. We've got a barley wine in there. Um, I know there's a double IPA. Um, we've also got a, a New England IPA. I'm just wondering if the wow factor on this thing is going to be enough to carry. It's a really super good beer. Uh, very good. As a matter of fact, it's almost gone because um, uh, it's it's so good. Um, 
for me, actually, no, I'll take that back. For me, the wow factor on this thing is the, just the good balance on this thing. It's super well balanced. And I like how kind of after this tartness subsides away, then it kind of, you know, it's, it's leaving your tongue. You, it leaves you with that kind of grainy malt character. Uh, and it's got to be like Biscuit Malt or, or Gold Pills Vienna. Gold Pills Vienna uh, or regular Vienna, but Gold Pills Vienna generally gives me that kind of grainy thing, but I think it's either biscuit malt or something. Uh, it's not that dark, so I don't know if biscuit malt would be it, but um, perhaps you use some, some flaked weed or something in here too, I don't know. Uh, and that might, that might be causing the, the chill haze effect. But anyway, hey, to the brewer, freaking awesome beer. This is, this is really nice. Um, this is my first one out of the bunch. Uh, I wanted to go kind of light. I figured the tartness would be great before I go in and start killing some turkey figure to be a good compliment so uh very well done uh good luck to you sir ma'am in the uh, third and final round and i uh, wish you all the best <coughs> cheers okay round three sj poor challenge competition and i guess it's the final round not just round three this is uh id number alpha 17 romeo delta 3 nine four yankee this is a new england ipa and it is 6.5 percent there is the label. And let's get into this thing. My second entry to judge. Oh, and I made the big mistake of not taking the tape off before. Do see we have a some kind of logo on the lid, which I thought was a no-no, but... Okay. Did have a hiss when I initially tried to take it off with the uh, tape on, so let's get a pour. And you know what? I don't have to worry about my pour on this because this is a New England IPA. So I'll make sure I try to work up a work up a nice head on it. I don't see any stuff floating, and even if it even if it even if it was, I guess it wouldn't matter. That's why I like New England IPAs. Um, okay, appearance on this thing. Yep, it is a. New England APA. You can tell by the hair. I mean, that's not a sleight of hand. That is uh, super haze going through this thing. Um, it is uh, color-wise, I would call it uh, kind of a very deep orange color. So orange, yeah, orange color to this thing. Looks like someone squeezing orange into this glass. The uh, head obviously is about two fingers. It is creamy and it is not going anywhere. It is staying there. I, I you know. I didn't want to get into the aroma already, but you can't avoid it because it's hitting you as soon as you open the bottle on this thing. But uh, yeah, it's a pretty uh, New England IPA. Man, this is going to be a tough round. Okay, let's go ahead and go in for a nose. Ooh, wow, this one smells delicious. This one smells delicious, my God. It's almost like I smell a little bit of vanilla, but I, I mean, you get a ton of citrus, ton of citrus, ton of top, uh, tropical. I mean, it, all in once, it smells like an orange, it smells like a peach, it smells like an apricot. Um, I do get, I know, it's not, I know it's not a milkshake IPA, but I kind of do get a mix of vanilla, seems like, with the fruit. That could just be my impressions, how I perceive all these different fruits thrown together, but um, yeah, the aroma, the aroma on this thing is off the chart. It's really nice. There's no, um, a lot of times with the homebrew, you get that kind of, you know, especially on New England IPAs, I find that you get, and I don't know if it's because of bottle fermentation or whatever, but you get that kind of slight Band-Aid. You know, you don't get any of that on this thing. This, nothing is clouding this other than good punch in the face of fruit. I mean, it's really, I mean, and I, I, let me, I don't know if I can, overstate this uh, enough, but, or I, I, I guess you can't overstate this. Um, the, the, the intensity of the fruit in this thing is really nice because it's very clean. It's very, it's unvarnished fruit, like very ripe fruit. And, you know, I don't know what hops they use, but whatever the hops they use works with, with the fruit. I would guess Denali because Denali seems to, if I was going to do a New England IPA, I think I would use Denali because it's got that pineapple you know, it, it, whatever whatever hops they chose re, uh, really worked. But anyway, enough on the aroma. As you can tell, I really like the aroma. So let's go ahead and for uh, for a taste. Cheers to the brewer.
Okay, <clears throat> sadly, the uh, the flavor is good, but um, it's not. I mean, with the aroma that this thing delivers, um, I was expecting a lot more in the follow through with the flavor, um, and I'm a, not underwhelmed. I'm a bit not dis I guess slightly disappointed because I really thought the flavor was going to have some good sweetness to balance it out, and I think it. I mean, it's got good flavor around the back of your tongue. Um, but it's a little slightly muddled um, for me. Um, again, that could be how I perceive these things. Um, a lot of times you get, you know, people that do mistakes with, with New England IPAs will have like this kind of soapy kind of quality to it. This one doesn't have a soapy quality. Um, that is what it, what usually bothers me about a lot of the IPAs that are flooded out there, uh, New England IPAs that are flooded on the market. Um, this one doesn't have that, but it's something. I don't know if it's oxidation or I don't know if it's um, something happened to the flavor. It's probably not oxidation because the, the aroma is so, so kicking on this thing. And look at the, man, look at the lacing on the... Uh, but yeah, the, the, I mean, it's ridiculous how good the aroma is on this thing. Yeah, I don't know. It's uh, I mean, it's good. It's a really good beer. Uh, just I think if if the if the flavor would have been apologize for the uh, baby in the background. We got a lot of folks visiting for Thanksgiving, but um, yeah, something about the the taste on the back end. Um, uh, like I said, it's 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 kind of like oxidation, not 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 the cardboard, but kind of flat, kind of kind of taste on it. Something, yeah, I don't know. Um, it's not, it's not wrong. I mean, it's, it's not a, not a flaw. I, I think it might be the choice of the, either the choice of the grist or the choice of the, of the hop selection. I don't, I don't know. Um, it wasn't uh, in, in some New England IPAs, at least on the last couple of rounds. I think last round I had one that had been over hopped and it had a lot of hop, hop particulate floating around in it and it caused hop burn. There's no problem with this. I mean, whatever they did, they did a good job of getting all the hop sediment out. Even though it's still cloudy, that was probably, I would imagine, maybe use like juice imperial yeast or something to kind of keep them milky or Conan or something. But um, it's not a vegetable kind of quality from the hops. I mean, they did a good job filtering all that out. It's more of the the interaction of the hops with the, with the grain, I think. Um, but... It's still, I mean, not to take any, anything away from this thing, it's still a terrific beer. I can totally see why it's in the final round. If nothing else, for the aroma alone. The aroma on this thing is ridiculous, but... Um, the rest of it is, uh, the mouthfeel is really good. It's a, it's a medium, medium to medium heavy mouthfeel. It's very creamy. Um, the carbonation is there. It's... it's little um it's not like super biting it's kind of just off that and so it gives you that kind of nice creamy you know kind of foams up on your tongue kind of what you want in a new england ipa mouthfeel on this thing is perfect the aroma on this thing is beyond perfect just the flavor on it um yeah something for me just doesn't not, i'm not saying it doesn't work just doesn't kind of coalesce to make that oh my god mind-blowing experience which is which is kind of what we're looking for in the third round so anyway Hey, to the brewer, I'm still going to enjoy the hell out of this thing. This is a really nice beer. Um, thank you very much. I, I can totally see why you're in the third round. Um, and hey, good luck to you in the round. It could just be my perception. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Hey, cheers. Okay, here we go. SJ Port Challenge 2019, round three. This is Delta 4-1, Romeo Delta 3, 6-5 Tango. This is a English barley wine with coffee. I like I like stuff that's English. I like barley. I like wine, and I like coffee. So, I'm thinking I'm gonna like this one. There is a label. English barley wine with coffee. All right, it's been sitting out a little bit, so it should be uh, should be uh, proper temperature. So let's go ahead and crack it. All right, not much of a hiss on this one.
stop it there because it looks to be pretty clear and I don't want to mess it up with anything that's in the bottom. So you can see that. You see uh, clarity on this thing is nice. You see the, you can kind of see the little ruby uh, highlight reflections in the bottom of the glass there. Um, yeah, I'm holding it up to the light. I don't know if you, yeah, you can't see that. But um, anyway, it is a uh, mahogany color. The uh, not much of a head, although I, it doesn't have the ABV written on here, but I'm assuming since it's English barley wine, it's, it's pretty high. Um, it was about a half finger head when I poured it and it's almost burned off already. Uh, it's just about gone. But, uh, but yeah, as far as the, uh, I'm hoping, it had a slight hiss, so I'm hoping that it's not, hoping that it didn't lose some carbonation in the travel. But uh, anyway, yeah, it looks like a, looks like a, looks, looks, looks about like a barley wine. So let's go ahead and get a nose. So the nose, um, this is interesting. Um, I didn't get as heavy of a barley wine aroma that I normally get uh, on barley wines. I did get the slight leather. Um, let me see if I can, and there's no head, so it shouldn't be, because the head's blocking it. Yeah, I mean, I get a, I can, I can get a, obviously malt, uh, but, but, you know, a little less than what I normally get on a barley wine. Get that kind of slight, slight leather, uh, but yeah, the, the aroma is not. It's pretty faint, actually. Anyway, so uh, all right, well, let's let's go in for a taste. Cheers, cheers to the brewer, whoever you are. Hmm. I don't know. I'm thinking... I'm thinking something may have happened to this one. So, uh, first of all, the mouthfeel. Uh, it's very viscous. It's very, um, I would say, high. Uh, in terms of uh, uh, the thickness of the fluid. Um, carbonation is very, very low. Um, I'm gonna have to go back and look at the barley wine style, but I'm thinking it's it, usually they're a little bit more and it kind of makes sense because when I cracked the bottle on it, I didn't get much of a hiss on it. One thing I'm definitely getting an alcohol, uh, alcohol warmth. Um, one thing though is um, it's almost a little more dry. Usually when a, I get a barley wine, it's like a, a lot more cloying. I don't know if that's because it's an American style versus an English. I don't know. I have to go back and look at that. Um, but it has a, this has a super dry finish for a barley wine. I think the color on this thing is awesome. Um, this deep mahogany kind of color. Hmm. Got a little bit more of the nose now, but a little bit more in the glass. But um, yeah, um, hmm. This is a tough one, uh, and maybe it's because I don't know enough about English barley wines. I mean, I've had English barley wines before, and I just remember them being remember them being a little more a little more cloying. Like I said, this one has the viscosity. Um, it's got the color. Um, I think the carbonation might be okay. Um, 
for as big a beer as this is, and I'm assuming it's probably over 10% because uh, it's a barley wine. Um, and I can feel the, I can feel the warmth. Um, but I think that, yeah, I think it's missing a little bit of sweetness, to be honest. Um, I get the kind of the, the heavy malt, um, minus the char that you get with an imperial stout. Uh, you get the heavy malt, um, almost like a almost like a port wine, right? Uh, in terms of that, I don't want to say tannin because it's not tannin. That's not the. I don't know how to describe the taste. It's a barley wine taste. It has that, but I think the one piece that it's missing is a little bit of sweetness to kind of. It's almost it's almost too dry, uh, if that makes sense. Um, yeah, the the head is like completely, completely gone now, except for the little ring around the side. Let's look at the lacing on this or the. Uh, the legs. Look at the legs on that. You can see the oh, it's sticking to the glass. It's got some. It's a big boy. Yeah, I don't know. For me, this one's just missing just a little bit on the on the sweetness side of it. So um, overall impressions. So it's a. I think it's a good. I think it's a really good beer. Uh, I see why. I see why it's in the competition uh, in round three. Um, it's a very beautiful color on it and you can actually see even better through it now since it's you know not as full I mean that's a gorgeous color uh, not much of a head on it but that's probably not a big deal for a barley wine um, the aroma was kind of light I mean it was I could I had to really get my nose in there and, and it wasn't really until it you know I drank down half of the glass where I could really begin to smell the kind of barley wine components um, it's got a slight leather um, but I think the one thing I notice about this the most is it's just, it's missing a little bit of the sweetness, which I expect in a barley wine. So anyway, uh, yeah, I guess, uh, it's a, yeah, overall impressions, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a really good beer. I mean, the, the brewer definitely is a, a damn good brewer because there's, you know, in terms of technical quality, I mean, fermentation was obviously on, on, you know, on par. Uh, there were no off flavors or anything like that. I think the only only actually the biggest complaint I could give it is is that it just didn't have enough sweetness on it for uh, for a barley wine style but uh, anyway that's I mean that could be my my ignorance of, of barley wines although I've had both England and English and American barley wines and and they've always been a little bit more sweeter with that kind of cloying kind of uh, quality to it so uh, yeah hey uh, thank you to the brewer good luck in uh, I guess this final round and we'll see what happens uh, cheers Okay, I'm gonna do the final two beers, uh, actually second to the last beer I have uh, for SJ Poor uh, Challenge 2019, round three. This is a um, um, India Pale Lager, six and a half percent. It is Bravo 2-3, Romeo Delta 3, 88 Romeo. There you go. Let's crack it. I believe I've had this one before. Matter of fact, I know I've had this one before. Okay, if this is the one I'm thinking of, it is a bit clearer than it was last time. Perhaps because it set for a while or it was a rebrew and uh, the brewer put some Put some more clarity into it so it's got a little over a finger head uh white off white uh with different various style bubbles uh, i've got good carbs streaming in from the bottom so i know this thing is well carved and it's a good nice straw color so again uh still some like some significant chill haze not as hazy as the last version of this i think i i drank again i don't know if that's because it was rebrewed or because it, it uh has set for a while and and, and uh and cleared up a little bit so and I didn't pour everything in, although I don't see anything else in here, so I might as well just dump that in. Oh, it, yeah, I did. I did dump it all in. So, okay. Um, so yeah. So let's go ahead and go for a nose. All right, this one. Um, it's getting more of the lager uh, quality on the nose. Still has that slight lemon. I'm 
wonder what the hops was on this one. It was something bright. Um, could be like Mochueca um, that would give it that uh, kind of bright, you know, lemon lime. I used that in a uh, collaboration beer I did with, uh, with Matt from Rec Brewery. So yeah, I'm getting that really nice, uh, the nose on this one is a little better than it was on the previous version. More of that kind of pilsnery uh, kind of aroma. I don't know how to explain it. Not crackery, but like grainy, uh, really pleasant. I really love. I really dig it because I'm, I'm a malt guy. Um, but this one combining with the um, that those bright hops that uh, I guess they use on the dry hop, or I imagine it's dry hop, which is probably why it's got some haze in it. Yeah. Uh, I don't think it has oats in it. From what I remember, it's a uh, light to medium mouthfeel. And I think oats would have made it a little more viscous or, or silky. But okay, yeah, this is a really good nose on this one uh, now because of the Pilsner quality is kind of sticking out. So it's going for a taste. Cheers to the brewer. I'll say it again, it's a light to medium mouthfeel, a good level of carbon here because it creams up on the, on the tongue when you drink it. Doesn't seem, I think last time I reviewed this beer, I talked about the, um, the bitterness being a little harsh on the back end. It's still there. I don't think it's quite as bad as it was before. When I say bad, um, um, doesn't seem like it's as biting. God, I love the Pilsner quality of a, of a Pilsner of, or of, of a lager. This finish is really, really dry. Now the, the bitterness is a little lower. Again, if it's the same beer, maybe it just aged a while and that it took the bite off the, off the bitterness. But now the bitterness is almost like a kind of a citrus rind, like whether it's a, not a lemon, but the lemon's kind of in my head because of the smell, um, but it's more like a grapefruit. This is like a, a grapefruit rind is what the bitterness is like now. Yeah, it's really nice. Wow, the smell's really good on this thing. Yeah, this is a different beer. Again, to the brewer, I don't know if it was age that did it or if he rebrewed it, but um, yeah, maybe this thing, if it's the same beer, maybe it just needed to kind of sit and kind of come into its own um, because I'm not getting that, that harsh bitterness on the back end like I was getting before. So now this is like, this is like drinking, this is like drinking a, a, a beer version of grapefruit is exactly what this is like. Um, I think that a little bit of sweetness in it, maybe uh, brewing at a little higher uh, temp or putting some maltodextrin or something in it, just to add just a tad, just a tad bit of sweetness would be would go along really well with this kind of grapefruit quality. But this is a this is a really nice beer. God, the aroma on this thing is kicking now. I can't wait till this comp is over so I can talk to whoever brewed this and uh, figure out how you got this aroma. Mm. Yeah, this is a good one. So to the brewer, um, uh, Bravo 2-3, Romeo Delta 3, 88 Romeo, uh, India Pale Lager. Very well done. Very nice beer. Uh, you probably get a little higher marks than me than you got on the last time, although I didn't give you low marks last time. Uh, this, is a, this is a really nice version. Uh, and cheers. Okay, here we go. The final beer uh, of the 2019 SJ Port Challenge. And I, I just want to say before I grade uh, or judge this last one, 
Um, this has been an absolute pleasure for me, uh, for whoever's watching. SJ, hopefully, if you're watching, uh, thank you so much for um, putting this together. I finally made it to the final round. Uh, man, the quality of the beers that come to the final round is out of this world. Now I know why people get so excited to get to the final round. I mean, the beers are just amazing. Um, and some of these beers, I think, are ones that I had before. Actually, some of the aging between round two and round three actually helped it, uh, made it even better. So uh, anyway, this has been a, a wonderful uh, experience, probably because I made it to round three. Uh, but, you know, regardless of what happens, um, I'm, I'm really happy with this year's turnout. It was a lot of fun, uh, win or lose. Um, anyway, so that, with that said, I'm down to the beer that uh, I'm the most scared of, this uh, um, Golden Belgian Strong Ale. This is the one that I enjoyed most of all the beers that I had out of round one and round two. Uh, I saved it for last. I figured a Golden Strong age as well. Uh, I drank all the hoppy ones, actually, except for the IPL, uh, and that one aged pretty well too. Um, Anyway, this is uh, ID number Foxtrot 62, Romeo Delta 3, uh, 58, uh, is that 58 or 53? 53 five, Zulu, 53 Zulu. Uh, a Golden Belgian Strong Ale, and it is a ABV 9%. So this is uh, the Sunday following Thanksgiving. Man, I got my package like the next day after Thanksgiving. Actually, actually, I got it right before Thanksgiving, I think. So I didn't waste any time. I've been doing about two a night, so. Anyway, let's crack this. <clears throat> nice, strong hiss. I remember this one had a... Wow, look at the smoke coming off that thing. Can you see it? I already got it out. It was a decent amount. And you know what I like is like, look, that's perfect bo uh, bottle volume right there. That's good bottling. Uh, probably a beer gun. So let's go ahead and get a pour. Look at this thing. That is just a, that is just a, man, I can smell it from here. I'm not supposed to go into Romy yet, but I can smell it from here. Uh, that's just a lovely beer. Look at that thing. Just the color on that thing. It's like this kind of deep golden, it's a golden strong ale, right? It's a deep Belgian golden color. What's really cool is as I'm looking at the, at the, at the head, there's like these layers in the hops, or I meant layers in the hops. There's these layers in the head. I'm gonna see if I can get this closer so you can see this. Um, I don't know if you can see this. I don't know if it... Nah, I guess you can't. But from my angle, um, or maybe you could, I don't know, I'll go back and look at this later. But from my angle, it looks like there are layers, maybe that's the glass. That might be the glass doing that. But it because it looks like little lines, like horizontal lines in the head. Um, yeah, that's probably the that's probably the glass doing it. Yeah, but anyway, uh, let's look at the little lacing on that. The legs just dripping down, ninety percent. Yeah, this thing is a, just a just a really nice bit. And I've let this one kind of get a little a little closer to cellar tip because the last one was a little bit colder than cellar tip. This is this one is right at probably the high fifties. It's right at cellar tip. So. Okay, let's get a nose. I already, I can already smell it, but yeah, it smells like candy. Um, got that sweet Belgian-y, just, you know, imagine like in a, remember in the cartoons, I don't think it was the Roadrunner, but it was like one of the cartoons, maybe it was Tom and Jerry, whenever the lady was uh, cooking in the kitchen and like this little bread vapor would come in and grab, you know, grab uh, Tom under the nose and like he'd float, you know, getting pulled. That's what this thing does to me. This thing just makes you want to slam it. I'm not going to slam a 9%er, but man, it just, oh, it's, it just smells so good. Yeah, I get some, so I get the candy. I get a little bit of like lemongrass. Um, you get, it's very complex. You get some, uh, some hints of apricot and peaches. And I mean, it's just super, super complex, this thing. Wow, man, what an aroma on this bad boy. And then on the back end, they all the all the aromas blend together. And it smells like this hard candy I used to eat when I was a little kid. 
but just super, man, I'm going to savor this one. This one is so excited about this. And look, the head's kind of still sticking around. I've been kind of dorking around with this beer for a while. I could probably stir it back up. Um, but, uh, yeah, this thing is, I'm, 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 I'm scared of this one. You know, I can't believe I beat this beer in my hub. Um, this, this beer is like really, really good. Okay. Okay. I've, I've uh, blown smoke up this brewer's butt enough. Let's go ahead and have a sip. Mmm. That's perfection. I mean, this this is this is um, perfect carb notes. I mean, like super super carb notes. Um, it's very creamy. It, like explodes on your tongue. Um, but, but it's, it's weird. It explodes on your tongue and you would think it would finish dry and it does kind of finish dry, but with the sweetness in it. I, I mean, that, that's kind of, it reminds me of a, and this is a different beer style, but, um, a Westy 12 is a quad, right? And it's like super dark fruit, super sweet, but has that same kind of effervescent on the carbonation, like the over carbonation where it like just, it, it just assaults your tongue and then you expect once it foams up like that, all the taste will be gone, but it's not. It comes on the back end, then you get hit with all the dark fruits and the, you know, all, all the uh, esters, and this is the same way. You, you go to sip it, it creams up on your, on your tongue, and then on the back end, you get this nice, smooth, sweet, like, oh, it's just really, really, really pleasant. God, mmm. Definitely gonna brew this thing. So, hey brewer, you know I'm, I'm talking to you. You and I are gonna link up after this and I've gotta get this recipe and brew it. Yeah, I mean, it's just, wow, this is just such a good beer. Okay, I'm not gonna sit and drink this whole thing on camera because it's 9%, but as you can tell, I really, really enjoy it. And um, I think this thing is gonna win the challenge, if I had to guess. Um, but, uh, and if, and if, and if it does, I think I might know who the brewer is <clears throat> and they really freaking deserve it. Cause this thing is really, really good. Mm. Like I said, I've been to, I've been to, um, uh, I've been to Holland before and I had Belgian beers in Holland and this, it totally reminds me of, of it. it it's just such a subtle just everything here. Okay, all right, I'll stop. Um, it's getting kind of embarrassing at this point. Okay, hey, um, again, SJ, thank you for this competition. Um, I mean, this this drinking a beer like this is why we get in this in this competition. Um, man, we got some really good brewers out there. Um, this has been uh, really really fun. And uh, hey, I mean, knock on the maple uh, for the dean's list. Hopefully, I can I can pull one out. But with something like this, I, I severely doubt it. But anyway, cheers.